Chan simplified Chinese, Chan traditional Chinese, Chan pinyin, Chan, a b b r, of Chinese, Chan na pinyin, Chana, from Sanskrit dhyana meaning meditation or meditative state, is a Chinese school of Mahayana Buddhism. It developed in China from the 6th century CE onwards, becoming dominant during the Tang and Song dynasties. After the Yuan, Chan more or less fused with Pure Land Buddhism. Chan spread south to Vietnam as Thien and north to Korea as Seon, and, in the 13th century, east to Japan as Zen. History The historical records required for a complete, accurate account of early Chan history no longer exist. Periodization The history of Chan in China can be divided into several periods. Chan as we know it today is the result of a long history, with many changes and contingent factors. Each period had different types of Chan, some of which have remained influential, while others vanished. Ferguson distinguishes three periods from the 5th century into the 13th century. The legendary period, from Bodhidharma in the late 5th century to the end of the Anlutian Rebellion around 765 CE, in the middle of the Tang dynasty, little written information is left from this period. The six patriarchs, including Bodhidharma and Huning, were among the first teachers of Chan. The split occurred between the northern and the southern school. The classical period, from the end of the Anlutian Rebellion around 765 CE to the beginning of the Song dynasty around 950 CE. This is the time of the great masters of Chan, such as Mazu Daoyi and Linji Yixuan, and the creation of the Yulu, Yulu genre, the recordings of the sayings and teachings of these great masters. The literary period, from around 950 to 1250, which spans the era of the Song dynasty 960-1279, monks compiled collections of gongan, sayings and deeds by the famous masters, appended with poetry and commentary. This genre reflects the influence of literati on the development of Chan. People from this time idealized the previous period as the golden age of Chan, producing the literature that portrays the supposed spontaneity of the celebrated masters. Although McRae has reservations about the division of Chan's history in phases or periods, he nevertheless distinguishes four phases in the history of Chan. Proto Chan C. 500 to 600 Chan developed in multiple locations in northern China. It was based on the practice of Dhyana, and is connected to the figures of Bodhidharma and Huke. Its principal text is the two entrances and four practices, attributed to Bodhidharma. Early Chan c. 600 to 900 Chan took its first clear contours. Prime figures are the fifth patriarch Daemon Hongren (601–674), his Dharma heir Yukon Shengshu (606 -706), the sixth patriarch Huning (638–713), antagonist of the quintessential Platform Sutra, and Shenhui (670–762), whose propaganda elevated Huning to the status of sixth patriarch. Main factions were the Northern School, Southern School, and Oxhead School. Middle Chan c. iconoclastic masters became to prominence. Prime figures are Mazu Daoyi (709–788), Shidu Zikian (710–790), Linji Yixuan (d. 867), and Shifeng Yikan (822–908). Main factions were the Hongzhou school and the Hubei faction an important text is the Anthology of the Patriarchal Hall 952, which gives a great amount of encounter stories and the well-known genealogy of the Chan school. Song Dynasty Chan c. Chan took its definitive shape, including the picture of the Golden Age of the Chan of the Tang Dynasty, and the use of koans for individual study and meditation. Key figures were Dawi Zongo (1089–1163), who introduced the Wa Tou practice, and Hongzi Zhengju (1091–1157), who emphasized Shikantaza. Main factions were the Linji school and the Kaodong school. Classic koan collections, such as the Blue Cliff Record, were assembled and reflect the influence of the literati on the development of Chan. In this phase Chan is transported to Japan, and exerts a great influence on Korean Seon via Jinil. Neither Ferguson nor McRae gives a periodization for Chinese Chan after the Song dynasty, though McRae mentions, 
at least a post-classical phase or perhaps multiple phases. Topic: <inaudible> Introduction of Buddhism in China, c. 200 to 500. Topic: <inaudible> Signification of Buddhism and Taoist influences. When Buddhism came to China, it was adapted to the Chinese culture and understanding. Theories about the influence of other schools in the evolution of Chan vary widely and heavily reliant upon speculative correlation rather than on written records or histories. Some scholars have argued that Chan developed from the interaction between Mahayana Buddhism and Taoism, while others insist that Chan has roots in yogic practices, specifically Kammathana, the consideration of objects, and Kasina, total fixation of the mind. A number of other conflicting theories exist. Buddhism was exposed to Confucian and Taoist influences when it came to China. Goddard quotes D. T. Suzuki, calling Chan a natural evolution of Buddhism under Taoist conditions. Buddhism was first identified to be a barbarian variant of Taoism, and Taoist terminology was used to express Buddhist doctrines in the oldest translations of Buddhist texts, a practice termed matching the concepts. Judging from the reception by the Han of the Hinayana works and from the early commentaries, it appears that Buddhism was being perceived and digested through the medium of religious Taoism, Taoism. Buddha was seen as a foreign immortal who had achieved some form of Taoist nandith. The Buddhists' mindfulness of the breath was regarded as an extension of Taoist breathing exercises. The first Buddhist recruits in China were Taoists. They developed high esteem for the newly introduced Buddhist meditational techniques, and blended them with Taoist meditation. Representatives of early Chinese Buddhism like Sengchao and Dao Sheng were deeply influenced by the Taoist keystone works of Laozi and Zhuangzi. Against this background, especially the Taoist concept of naturalness was inherited by the early Chan disciples. They equated, to some extent, the ineffable Tao and Buddha nature, and thus, rather than feeling bound to the abstract wisdom of the sutras emphasized Buddha nature to be found in everyday human life, just as the Tao, Neo-Taoist concepts were taken over in Chinese Buddhism as well. Concepts such as Ti Yang, Ti Yang essence and function, and Li Shi, Li Shi noumenon and phenomenon, or principle and practice were first taken over by Hua Yen Buddhism, which consequently influenced Chan deeply. On the other hand, Taoists at first misunderstood sunyata to be akin to the Taoist non-being. The emerging Chinese Buddhism nevertheless had to compete with Taoism and Confucianism. Because Buddhism was a foreign influence, however, and everything barbarian was suspect, certain Chinese critics were jolted out of complacency by the spread of the Dharma. In the first four centuries of the Christian era, this barbarian influence was infiltrating China just when it was least politically stable and more vulnerable to sedition. As the philosophy and practice infiltrated society, many traditionalists banded together to stop the foreign influence, not so much out of intolerance an attitude flatly rejected by both Taoism and Confucianism, but because they felt that the Chinese world view was being turned upside down. Divisions of training When Buddhism came to China, there were three divisions of training. The training in virtue and discipline in the precepts SKT, Sila. The training in mind through meditation SKT, Dhyana, to attain deep states of meditation SKT, Samadhi, and The training in the recorded teachings SKT. Dharma, it was in this context that Buddhism entered into Chinese culture. Three types of teachers with expertise in each training practice developed Vinaya masters specialized in all the rules of discipline for monks and nuns Dhyana masters specialized in the practice of meditation, and Dharma masters specialized in mastery of the Buddhist texts. Monasteries and practice centers were created that tended to focus on either the Vinaya and training of monks or the teachings focused on one scripture or a small group of texts. Dhyana Chan masters tended to practice in solitary hermitages, or to be associated with Vinaya training monasteries or the Dharma teaching centers. The later naming of the Zen school has its origins in this view of the threefold division of training. McRae goes so far as to say, One important feature must not be overlooked, Chan was not nearly as separate from these other types of Buddhist activities as one might think. He monasteries of which Chan monks became abbots were comprehensive institutions. 
public monasteries that supported various types of Buddhist activities other than Chan style meditation. The reader should bear this point in mind, in contrast to the independent denominations of Soto and Rinzai that emerged largely by government fiat in 17th century Japan, there was never any such thing as an institutionally separate Chan school at any time in Chinese Buddhist history emphasis McCray. Topic. Legendary or Proto-Chan c. 500-600 Mahakasyapa and the Flower Sermon The Chan tradition ascribes the origins of Chan in India to the Flower Sermon, the earliest source for which comes from the 14th century. It is said that Gautama Buddha gathered his disciples one day for a Dharma talk. When they gathered together, the Buddha was completely silent and some speculated that perhaps the Buddha was tired or ill. The Buddha silently held up and twirled a flower and his eyes twinkled. Several of his disciples tried to interpret what this meant, though none of them were correct. One of the Buddha's disciples, Mahakasyapa, gazed at the flower and broke into laughter. The Buddha then acknowledged Mahakasyapa's insight by saying the following, I possess the true Dharma eye, the marvelous mind of Nirvana, the true form of the formless, the subtle Dharma gate that does not rest on words or letters but is a special transmission outside of the scriptures. This I entrust to Mahakasyapa. Topic: First six patriarchs, c. 500 early 8th century. Traditionally, the origin of Chan in China is credited to the Indian monk Bodhidharma. Only scarce historical information is available about him, but his hagiography developed when the Chan tradition grew stronger and gained prominence in the early 8th century. By this time a lineage of the six ancestral founders of Chan in China was developed. In the late 8th century, under the influence of Huneng's student Shenhui, the traditional form of this lineage had been established Bodhidharma da Mo C. 440 C. 528 Dazu Hu K. Wei K. 487-593 Senkan, Senkan minus 606 Dai Daozin, Dao Xin 580 to 651. Damon Hongren, Hong Ren 601 to 674. Huning, Wei Neng 638 to 713. In later writings, this lineage was extended to include 28 Indian patriarchs. In the Song of Enlightenment, Zheng Dao Gei, Zheng Dao Gei of Yangzhe Zanwei, Yangzhe Zan Jue 665 to 713, one of the chief disciples of Hunan, it is written that Bodhidharma was the 28th patriarch in a line of descent from Mahakasyapa, a disciple of Sakyamuni Buddha, and the first patriarch of Chan Buddhism. Topic: <laughs> Lankavatara Sutra. In its beginnings in China, Chan primarily referred to the Mahayana Sutras and especially to the Lankavatara Sutra. As a result, early masters of the Chan tradition were referred to as Lankavatara masters. As the Lankavatara Sutra teaches the doctrine of the Ekayana, one vehicle, the early Chan school was sometimes referred to as the one vehicle school. In other early texts, the school that would later become known as Chan is sometimes even referred to as simply the Lankavatara school. Ch. Lang Jia Zong Linka A Zong. Accounts recording the history of this early period are to be found in the records of the Lankavatara masters. Chinese. Lang Jia Shi Zi. Topic. Bodhidharma. The establishment of Chan in China is traditionally credited to the Buddhist monk Bodhidharma, who is recorded as having come to China during the time of Southern and Northern dynasties to teach a special transmission outside scriptures, which did not stand upon words. Little contemporary biographical information on Bodhidharma is extant, and subsequent accounts became layered with legend. There are three principal sources for Bodhidharma's biography, the record of the Buddhist monasteries of Luoyang by Yang Zanzis, Yang Zanji 547, Tan Lin's preface to the long scroll of the treatise on the two entrances and four practices 6th century CE, and Dai Daozin's further biographies of eminent monks 7th century CE. These sources vary in their account of Bodhidharma being either from Persia, 547 CE, a Brahmin monk from South India, 645 CE. 
the third son of a Brahmin king of South India. C. 715 CE. Some traditions specifically describe Bodhidharma to be the third son of a Pallava king from Kanchipuram. The long scroll of the treatise on the two entrances and four practices written by Tan Lin, Tan Lin 506-574, contains teachings which are attributed to Bodhidharma. The text is known from the Dunhuang manuscripts. The two entrances to enlightenment are the entrance of principle and the entrance of practice. The entrance of principle is to become enlightened to the truth on the basis of the teaching. One must have a profound faith in the fact that one and the same true nature is possessed by all sentient beings, both ordinary and enlightened, and that this true nature is only covered up and made imperceptible in the case of ordinary people by false sense impressions. The entrance of practice includes the following four increments. Practice of the retribution of enmity, to accept all suffering as the fruition of past transgressions, without enmity or complaint. Practice of the acceptance of circumstances, to remain unmoved even by good fortune, recognizing it as evanescent. Practice of the absence of craving, to be without craving, which is the source of all suffering. Practice of accordance with the Dharma, to eradicate wrong thoughts and practice the six perfections, without having any practice. This text was used and studied by Hu Ke and his students. The true nature refers to the Buddha nature. Topic. Huke Bodhidharma settled in northern Wei China. Shortly before his death, Bodhidharma appointed his disciple Dazu Huke to succeed him, making Huke the first Chinese-born ancestral founder and the second ancestral founder of Chan in China. Bodhidharma is said to have passed three items to Huke as a sign of transmission of the Dharma, a robe, a bowl, and a copy of the Lankavatara Sutra. The transmission then passed to the second ancestral founder Dazu Huke, the third Sankan, the fourth ancestral founder Dai Daozin, and the fifth ancestral founder Daimon Hongren. <laughs> Early Chan in Tang China c. 600-900 <laughs> East Mountain Teachings The period of Dai Daozin (580–651) and Daimon Hongren Hong Ren (601–674) came to be called the East Mountain Teaching due to the location of the residence of Daimon Hongren in Wangmai County, modern Anhui. The term was used by Yukon Shangshu, the most important successor to Hongren. The East Mountain community was a specialized meditation training center. Hongren was a plain meditation teacher who taught students of various religious interests including practitioners of the Lotus Sutra, students of Madhyamaka philosophy, or specialists in the monastic regulations of Buddhist Vinaya. The establishment of a community in one location was a change from the wandering lives of Bodhidharma and Huke and their followers. It fitted better into the Chinese society, which highly valued community-oriented behavior, instead of solitary practice. Yukon Shengshu. Yukon Shengshu, Shengshu 606 was the most important successor to Hongren. In 701 he was invited to the imperial court by Zhou Empress Wu Zetian, who paid him due imperial reverence. The first lineage documents were produced in this period. T he genealogical presentation of the Chan transmission was first recorded on paper in the early years of metropolitan Chan activity. The earliest recorded instance of this was in the epitaph for a certain Faru, a student of Hongren's who died in 689, and by the second decade of the 8th century, the later followers of Hongren had produced two separate texts describing the transmission from Bodhidharma to Shengshu. The transition from the East Mountain to the two capitals changed the character of Chan. IT was only when Hongren's successors moved into the environment of the two capitals, with its literate society and incomparably larger urban scale, that well-written texts were required for disseminating the teaching. Topic: <laughs> Southern School, Huning and Shenhui. According to tradition, the sixth and last ancestral founder, Huning, Wei Neng 638-713, was one of the giants of Chan history, and all surviving schools regard him as their ancestor. The dramatic story of Huning's life tells that there was a controversy over his claim to the title of patriarch. 
After being chosen by Hongren, the fifth ancestral founder, Huning had to flee by night to Nanhua Temple in the south to avoid the wrath of Hongren's jealous senior disciples. Modern scholarship, however, has questioned this narrative. Historic research reveals that this story was created around the middle of the 8th century, beginning in 731 by Shenhui, a successor to Huning, to win influence at the imperial court. He claimed Huning to be the successor of Hongren instead of Shengshu, the recognized successor. In 745 Shenhui was invited to take up residence in the Hez Temple in the capital, Dongdu modern Luoyang. in 753, he fell out of grace and had to leave Dongdu to go into exile. The most prominent of the successors of Shenhui's lineage was Gaifeng Zongmi. According to Zongmi, Shenhui's approach was officially sanctioned in 796, when an imperial commission determined that the southern line of Chan represented the orthodox transmission and established Shen Wei as the seventh patriarch, placing an inscription to that effect in the Shen Lung Temple. Doctrinally, Shenhui's southern school is associated with the teaching that enlightenment is sudden while the northern or east mountain school is associated with the teaching that enlightenment is gradual. This was a polemical exaggeration since both schools were derived from the same tradition, and the so-called Southern School incorporated many teachings of the more influential Northern School. Eventually both schools died out, but the influence of Shenhui was so immense that all later Chan schools traced their origin to Huning, and "...sudden enlightenment." became a standard doctrine of Chan. Shenhui's influence is traceable in the Platform Sutra, which gives a popular account of the story of Huning but also reconciles the antagonism created by Shenhui. Salient is that Shenhui himself does not figure in the Platform Sutra, he was effectively written out of Chan history. The Platform Sutra also reflects the growing popularity of the Diamond Sutra in 8th century Chinese Buddhism. Thereafter, the essential texts of the Chan school were often considered to be both the Lankavatara Sutra and the Diamond Sutra. The Lankavatara Sutra, which endorses the Buddha nature, emphasized purity of mind, which can be attained in gradations. The Diamond Sutra emphasizes sunyata, which must be realized totally or not at all. David Kalupahana associates the later Kaodong school, Japanese Soto, gradual, and Linji school, Japanese Rinzai school, sudden schools with the Yogacara and Madhyamaka philosophies respectively. The same comparison has been made by McRae. The Madhyamaka school elaborated on the theme of sunyata, which was set forth in the Prashnaparamita sutras to which the Diamond Sutra also belongs. The shift from the Lankavatara Sutra to the Diamond Sutra also signifies a tension between Buddha nature teachings, which imply a transcendental reality, versus sunyata, which denies such a transcendental reality. <laughs> Tibetan Chan Chinese Chan Buddhist teachers such as Mahayan first went to Tibet in the 8th century during the height of the Tibetan Empire. There seems to have been disputes between them and Indian Buddhists, as exemplified by the Sami debate. Many Tibetan Chan texts have been recovered from the caves at Dunhuang, where Chan and Tantric Buddhists lived side by side and this led to religious syncretism in some cases. Chan Buddhism survived in Tibet for several centuries, but had mostly been replaced by the 10th century developments in Tibetan Buddhism. According to Sam Van Shaikh, after the dark period, all visible influences of Chan were eliminated from Tibetan Buddhism, and Mahayoga and Chan were carefully distinguished from each other. This trend can already be observed in the 10th century lamp for the eyes in contemplation by the great central Tibetan scholar Nubes Chen Sangs or Jias Yi Shis. This influential work represented a crucial step in the codification of Chan, Mahayoga, and the Great Perfection as distinct vehicles to enlightenment. In comparison, our group of Dunhuang manuscripts exhibits a remarkable freedom, blurring the lines between meditation systems which were elsewhere kept quite distinct. The system of practice set out in these manuscripts did not survive into the later Tibetan tradition. Indeed, this creative integration of meditation practices derived from both Indic and Chinese traditions could only have been possible during the earliest years of Tibetan Buddhism, when doctrinal categories were still forming, and in this sense it represents an important stage in the Tibetan assimilation of Buddhism. Topic. Classical or Middle Chan, Tang Dynasty c.
Daozin, Hongren, Shengshu, Huning and Shenhui all lived during the early Tang. The later period of the Tang dynasty is traditionally regarded as the Golden Age of Chan. This proliferation is described in a famous saying. Look at the territory of the House of Tang. The whole of it is the realm of the Chan school. Topic. And Lushan Rebellion The Anlushan Rebellion 755 led to a loss of control by the Tang dynasty, and changed the Chan scene again. Metropolitan Chan began to lose its status, while other schools were arising in outlying areas controlled by warlords. These are the forerunners of the Chan we know today. Their origins are obscure. The power of Shen Hui's preaching is shown by the fact that they all trace themselves to Wei Nang. Topic. Hung Cho School The most important of these schools is the Hongzhou School Hongzhou Zong of Mizu, to which also belong Shitu, Beijing Huaihai, Wangbo and Linji Rinze. Linji is also regarded as the founder of one of the five houses. This school developed shock techniques such as shouting, beating, and using irrational retorts to startle their students into realization. Some of these are common today, while others are found mostly in anecdotes. It is common in many Chan traditions today for Chan teachers to have a stick with them during formal ceremonies which is a symbol of authority and which can be also used to strike on the table during a talk. These shock techniques became part of the traditional and still popular image of Chan masters displaying irrational and strange behavior to aid their students. Part of this image was due to later misinterpretations and translation errors, such as the loud belly shout known as katsu. Katsu means to shout, which has traditionally been translated as yelled katsu, which should mean yelled a yell. A well-known story depicts Mizu practicing Diana, but being rebuked by his teacher Nanyue Huairong, comparing seated meditation with polishing a tile. According to Foray, the criticism is not about Diana as such, but the idea of becoming a Buddha by means of any practice, lowered to the standing of a means to achieve an end. Quote, quote. The criticism of seated Diana reflects a change in the role and position of monks in Tang society, who undertook only pious works, reciting sacred texts and remaining seated in Diana. Nevertheless, seated Diana remained an important part of the Chan tradition, also due to the influence of Gaifeng Zongmi, who tried to balance Diana and insight. The Hung Cho school has been criticized for its radical subitism. Gaifeng Zongmi, Guifeng Zongmi an influential teacher scholar and patriarch of both the Chan and the Huayan school, claimed that the Hongzhou school teaching led to a radical nondualism that denies the need for spiritual cultivation and moral discipline. While Zongmi acknowledged that the essence of Buddha nature and its functioning in the day-to-day -day reality are but different aspects of the same reality, he insisted that there is a difference. Topic. Shidu Zikian Traditionally Shidu Zikian ch. Shi tu shi qian c. 700 c. is seen as the other great figure of this period. In the Chan lineages he is regarded as the predecessor of the Kaodong Soto school. He is also regarded as the author of the Sandakai, a poem which formed the basis for the Song of the Precious Mirror Samadhi of Dongshan Langji JP. Tozen Ryokan and the teaching of the five ranks. Topic: The Great Persecution. During 845 to 846, Emperor Wuzong persecuted the Buddhist schools in China. It was a desperate attempt on the part of the hard-pressed central government, which had been in disarray since the Anlushan Rebellion of 756, to gain some measure of political, economic, and military relief by preying on the Buddhist temples with their immense wealth and extensive lands. This persecution was devastating for Metropolitan Chan, but the Chan school of Ma Su and his likes survived, and took a leading role in the Chan of the later Tang. Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period 907 After the fall of the Tang Dynasty, China was without effective central control during the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period. 
China was divided into several autonomous regions. Support for Buddhism was limited to a few areas. The Hua Yen and Tiantai schools suffered from the changing circumstances, since they had depended on imperial support. The collapse of Tang society also deprived the aristocratic classes of wealth and influence, which meant a further drawback for Buddhism. Shengshu's northern school and Henshui's southern school didn't survive the changing circumstances. Nevertheless, Chan emerged as the dominant stream within Chinese Buddhism, but with various schools developing various emphasizes in their teachings, due to the regional orientation of the period. The Fayan school, named after Fa Yen Wen I became the dominant school in the southern kingdoms of Nantang Yangshi, Changshi, and Wuyue Che Chang. Topic. Literary Chan – Song Dynasty c. The Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period was followed by the Song Dynasty, which established a strong central government. During the Song Dynasty, Chan, Chan was used by the government to strengthen its control over the country, and Chan grew to become the largest sect in Chinese Buddhism. An ideal picture of the Chan of the Tang period was produced, which served the legacy of this newly acquired status. In the Song Dynasty Chinese Chan Buddhism reached something of a climax paradigm. By climax paradigm, I mean a conceptual configuration by which Chan was described in written texts, practiced by its adherents, and by extension understood as a religious entity by the Chinese population as a whole. Previous events in Chan were interpreted through the lens of the Song dynasty configuration, and subsequent developments in China, Korea, Japan, and Vietnam were evaluated, even as they occurred, against what was known of the standards established during the Song. Thus the romanticized image of the great Tang dynasty masters, Mazu and his students, Kaoshan, Dongshan, and their students, and of course Lin Ji, was generated by Song dynasty authors and functioned within Song dynasty texts. Similarly, even where subsequent figures throughout East Asia, Hakuan Ekaku (1685–1769), the famous reviver of Japanese Rinzai, is the best example. Evoke the examples of Bodhidharma, the sixth patriarch Huning, Mazu, and the others. They do so through the conceptual filter of Song Dynasty Chan. Topic: <laughs> Five Houses of Chan. During the Song, the Five Houses (ch). Wu Jia of Chan, or five schools, were recognized. These were not originally regarded as schools or sects, but based on the various Chan genealogies. Historically, they have come to be understood as schools. The five houses of Chan are Gaiyang School, Wai Yang Zong, named after masters Guishan Lingyu (771–854) and Yangshan Huji (813–890), Dharma descendants of Mazu Daoyi. Linji School, Linji Zong, named after master Linji Yishuan (died 866), whose lineage came to be traced to Mazu, establishing him as the archetypal iconoclastic Chan master. Kaodong School, Sao Dong Zong, named after masters Dongshan Lang Ji (807–869) and Kaoshan Benji (840–901). Yunmen School, Yunmen Zong, named after master Yunmen Wenyan (died 949), a student of Shifeng Yikin (822–908), whose lineage was traced to Shitu Zikian. Fayan School, Fa Yan Zong, named after master Fayan Wen Yi (885–958). A Grand student of Shifeng Yikin. Topic: Rise of the Linji School. The Linji School became the dominant school within Chan due to support from literati and the court. Before the Song Dynasty, the Linji School is rather obscure, and very little is known about its early history. The first mention of Linji is in the Zutang Ji, compiled in 952, 86 years after Linji's death. But the Zutang Ji pictures the Shifeng Yikan lineage as heir to the legacy of Mazu and the Hongzhou school. According to Welter, the real founder of the Linji school was Shoshan or Baoying Shengyan Shou Shan Sheng Yen 926 to 993, a fourth generation Dharma heir of Linji. The Tian Sheng Guangdeng Lu, Tian Sheng Guangdeng Lu, Tian Sheng era expanded lamp record. 
Compiled by the official Li Zhengshu Li Zunshu confirms the status of Shoshin Shengyan, but also pictures Lin Ji as a major Chan patriarch and heir to the Mazu, displacing the prominence of the Fayan lineage. It also established the slogan of, a special transmission outside the teaching, supporting the Lin Ji school claim of, Chan is separate from and superior to all other Buddhist teachings. Dawi Zongo Over the course of Song Dynasty the Gaiyang, Feiyan, and Yunmen schools were gradually absorbed into the Linji. Song Chan was dominated by the Linji school of Dawi Zongo, which in turn became strongly affiliated to the imperial court. The Tawei school of Sung Chan had become closely associated with the Sung court, high officials, and the literati. With the establishment of the Wushan Gozen system during the Southern Sung, the school of Tawei took precedence. The Chinese bureaucratic system entered into Chan temples throughout the country, and a highly organized system of temple rank and administration developed. The Gozen system was a system of state controlled temples, which were established by the Song government in all provinces. Topic. Koan system The teaching styles and words of the classical masters were recorded in the so-called encounter dialogues. Snippets of these encounter dialogues were collected in texts as the Blue Cliff Record 1125 of Yuanwu, the Gateless Gate 1228 of Wuman, both of the Linji lineage, and the Book of Equanimity 1223 by Wansong Xingshu of the Kaodong lineage. These texts became classic Gong'an cases, together with verse and prose commentaries, which crystallized into the systematized Gong'an practice. According to Miura and Sasaki, it was during the lifetime of Yuan Wu's successor, Dawei Zongo, Dawei Zonggao 1089 that Koan Chan entered its determinative stage. Gong'an practice was prevalent in the Linji school, to which Yuanwu and Dawi belonged, but it was also employed on a more limited basis by the Kaodong school. The recorded encounter dialogues, and the koan collections which derived from this genre, mark a shift from solitary practice to interaction between master and student. The essence of enlightenment came to be identified with the interaction between masters and students. Whatever insight Diana might bring, its verification was always interpersonal. In effect, enlightenment came to be understood not so much as an insight, but as a way of acting in the world with other people. This mutual enquiry of the meaning of the encounters of masters and students of the past gave students a role model. One looked at the enlightened activities of one's lineal forebears in order to understand one's own identity. Taking the role of the participants and engaging in their dialogues instead Koan practice was a literary practice, styling snippets of encounter dialogue into well-edited stories. It arose in interaction with educated literati. There were dangers involved in such a literary approach, such as fixing specific meanings to the cases. Dawi Zongo is even said to have burned the woodblocks of the Blue Cliff Record, for the hindrance it had become to study of Chan by his students. Topic. Silent illumination The Kaodong was the other school to survive into the Song period. Its main protagonist was Hung Chi Cheng Chua, a contemporary of Dawi Zongo. It put emphasis on silent illumination or just sitting. This approach was attacked by Dawi as being mere passivity, and lacking emphasis on gaining insight into one's true nature. Cheng Chua in his turn criticized the emphasis on koan study. Post-classical Chan c. 1300 present. Topic. Yuan dynasty 1279 The Yuan dynasty was the empire established by Kublai Khan, the leader of the Borjigan clan, after the Mongol Empire conquered the Jin dynasty 1115 and the Southern Song dynasty. Chan began to be mixed with Pure Land Buddhism as in the teachings of Zongfeng Mingben 1263 <laughs> Ming dynasty 1368 
Chan Buddhism enjoyed something of a revival in the Ming dynasty, with teachers such as Hanshan Deking, Han Shan De Qing, who wrote and taught extensively on both Chan and Pure Land Buddhism, Mi Yun Yuan Wu, Mi Yun Yuan Wu, who came to be seen posthumously as the first patriarch of the Obaku school of Zen, and as Yunqi Zhuang, Yun Qi Zhu Hong, and Uyi Zhishu. Chan was taught alongside Pure Land Buddhism in many monasteries. In time much of the distinction between them was lost, and many masters taught both Chan and Pure Land. With the downfall of the Ming, several Chan masters fled to Japan, founding the Obaku school. Topic. Qing dynasty 1644 In the beginning of the Qing dynasty, Chan was reinvented by the revival of beating and shouting practices by Mi and Yuanwu and the publication of the Wuding Yantong, the strict transmission of the five Chan schools, by Feiyan Tongrongs a Dharma heir of Mi and Yuanwu. The book placed self-proclaimed Chan monks without proper Dharma transmission in the category of lineage unknown, Sifa Weishong, thereby excluding several prominent Kaodong monks. Topic. Modernization Topic. 19th century Late Qing Dynasty. Around 1900, Buddhists from other Asian countries showed a growing interest in Chinese Buddhism. Anagarika Dharmapala visited Shagai in 1893, intending to make a tour of China, to arouse the Chinese Buddhists to send missionaries to India to restore Buddhism there, and then to start a propaganda throughout the whole world," but eventually limiting his stay to Shanghai. Japanese Buddhist missionaries were active in China in the beginning of the 20th century. <laughs> Republic of China 1912 First Buddhist Revival The modernization of China led to the end of the Chinese Empire, and the installation of the Republic of China, which lasted on the mainland until the Communist Revolution and the installation of the People's Republic of China in 1949. After further centuries of decline during the Qing, Chan was revived again in the early 20th century by Xu Yun, Xu Yun a well-known figure of 20th century Chinese Buddhism. Many Chan teachers today trace their lineage to Xu Yun, including Sheng Yan, Sheng Yan and Suan Hua, Zan Hua who have propagated Chan in the West where it has grown steadily through the 20th and 21st century. The Buddhist reformist Taishu propagated a Chan-influenced humanistic Buddhism, which is endorsed by Jing Wei, former abbot of Balin Monastery. Until 1949, monasteries were built in the Southeast Asian countries, for example by monks of Guanghua Monastery, to spread Chinese Buddhism. Presently, Guanghua Monastery has seven branches in the Malay Peninsula and Indonesia. Topic: People's Republic of China, 1949 present, Second Buddhist Revival. Chan was repressed in China during the recent modern era in the early periods of the People's Republic, but subsequently had been reasserting itself on the mainland and has a significant following in Taiwan and Hong Kong as well as among overseas Chinese. Since the Chinese economic reform of the 1970s, a new revival of Chinese Buddhism is going on. Ancient Buddhist temples, such as Balin Monastery and Guanghua Monastery have been refurbished. Balin Monastery was ruined long before 1949. In 1988, Jing Wei was persuaded to take over the Hebei Buddhist Association, and start rebuilding the monastery. Jing Wei is a student and Dharma successor of Xu Yun, but has also adopted the humanistic Buddhism of Taishu. Guanghua Monastery was restored beginning in 1979, when a six year restoration program began under the supervision of then 70 year old Venerable Master Yuan Zhao. In 1983, the temple became one of the Chinese Buddhism regional temples, whilst 36 year old Master Yiran Yi Ran Fa Shi became abbot. The same year, Venerable Master Yuan Zhao funded the establishment of the new Fujian Buddhism Academy Fujian Fu Yuan on the site. Topic. Taiwan Several Chinese Buddhist teachers left China during the Communist Revolution, and settled in Hong Kong and Taiwan. 
Sheng Yen was the founder of the Dharma Drum Mountain, a Buddhist organization based in Taiwan. During his time in Taiwan, Sheng Yen was well known as one of the progressive Buddhist teachers who sought to teach Buddhism in a modern and Western-influenced world. Wei Chua was born in Sichuan, China, and ordained in Taiwan. In 1982, he founded Lin Quan Temple in Taipei County and became known for his teaching on Chan practices by offering many lectures and seven-day Chan retreats. His order is called Cheng Tai Shan. Two additional traditions emerged in the 1960s, based their teaching on Chan practices. Cheng Yen, born 1937, a Buddhist nun, founded the Su Kai Foundation as a charity organization with Buddhist origins on 14 May 1966 in Hualien, Taiwan. She was inspired by her master and mentor, the late Venerable Master Yin Shun, Yin Shun Dao Shi, Yin Shun Dao Shi, a proponent of humanistic Buddhism, who exhorted her to work for Buddhism and for all sentient beings. The organization began with a motto of instructing the rich and saving the poor. As a group of 30 housewives who donated a small amount of money each day to care for needy families, Sing Yun, born 1927, founded the Fo Guang Shan, an international Chinese Buddhist new religious movement based in Taiwan in 1967. The order promotes humanistic Buddhism. Fo Guang Shan also calls itself the International Buddhist Progress Society. The headquarters of Fo Guang Shan, located in Dashu District, Kaohsiung, is the largest Buddhist monastery in Taiwan. Sing Yun's stated position within Fo Guang Shan is that it is an amalgam of all eight schools of Chinese Buddhism. Ba Zong Jian Hong, including Chan. Fo Guang Shan is the most comprehensive of the major Buddhist organizations of Taiwan, focusing extensively on both social works and religious engagement. In Taiwan, these four masters are popularly referred to as the Four Heavenly Kings of Taiwanese Buddhism, with their respective organizations Dharma Drum Mountain, Cheng Tai Shan, Su Kai, and Fo Guang Shan being referred to as the Four Great Mountains. Topic. Spread of Chan Buddhism in Asia Topic. Thien in Vietnam According to traditional accounts of Vietnam, in 580 an Indian monk named Vinataruchi Vietnamese, da Lu Kai, traveled to Vietnam after completing his studies with Senkan, the third patriarch of Chinese Chan. This, then, would be the first appearance of Thien Buddhism. Other early Thien schools included that of Wu Yantong Chinese, Wu Yantong Vietnamese, Vo Nan Thong, which was associated with the teachings of Mazu Daoyi, and the Thao Duong Kaodong, which incorporated Nianfo chanting techniques, both were founded by Chinese monks. <laughs> Sewn in Korea Sewn was gradually transmitted into Korea during the late Silla period 7th through 9th centuries as Korean monks of predominantly Hwaeom Hangul, Hwaeomjong Hanja, Wa Yan Zong and East Asian Yogacara Hangul, Yusigjong Hanja, Wai Shi Zong background began to travel to China to learn the newly developing tradition. Sewn received its most significant impetus and consolidation from the Goryeo monk Jinil who established a reform movement and introduced koan practice to Korea. Jinil established the Songgwangsa Songguangsi as a new center of pure practice. <laughs> Zen in Japan Zen was not introduced as a separate school in Japan until the 12th century when Isai traveled to China and returned to establish a Linji lineage, which is known in Japan as the Rinzai. In 1215, Dogen, a younger contemporary of Isai's, journeyed to China himself, where he became a disciple of the Kaodong master Rujing. After his return, Dogen established the Soto school, the Japanese branch of Kaodong. The schools of Zen that currently exist in Japan are the Soto, Rinzai, and Obaku. Of these, Soto is the largest and Obaku the smallest. Rinzai is itself divided into several subschools based on temple affiliation, including Mayashin ji, Nanzan ji, Tenryu ji, Daitoku ji, and Tofuku ji. <laughs> Chan in Indonesia In the 20th century, during the first Buddhist revival, missionaries were sent to Indonesia and Malaysia. 
Ashen Jinarakita, who played a central role in the revival of Indonesian Buddhism, received ordination as a Chan Shramanera on July 29, 1953 and received the name Ti Jung from Bisu Ben Ching. Chan in the Western world Chan has become especially popular in its Japanese form. Although it is difficult to trace when the West first became aware of Chan as a distinct form of Buddhism, the visit of Soyan Shaku, a Japanese Zen monk, to Chicago during the 1893 Parliament of the World's Religions is often pointed to as an event that enhanced its profile in the Western world. It was during the late 1950s and the early 1960s that the number of Westerners pursuing a serious interest in Zen, other than the descendants of Asian immigrants, reached a significant level. <laughs> Western Chan lineages The first Chinese master to teach Westerners in North America was Suan Hua, who taught Chan and other traditions of Chinese Buddhism in San Francisco during the early 1960s. He went on to found the City of 10,000 Buddhas, a monastery and retreat center located on a 237-acre property near Ukiah, California, founding the Dharma Realm Buddhist Association. Another Chinese Chan teacher with a Western following is Sheng Yen, a master trained in both the Kaodong and Linji schools. He first visited the United States in 1978 under the sponsorship of the Buddhist Association of the United States, and subsequently founded the CMC Chan Meditation Center in Queens, New York and the Dharma Drum Retreat Center in Pine Bush, New York. <laughs> New religious movements Fo Guang Shan is a Taiwan-based New Religious Movement with branches worldwide. It belongs to the Chan school. Its founder, Sing Yun, is a Linji lineage holder. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Doctrinal background. Though Zen narrative states that it is a special transmission outside scriptures, which did not stand upon words, Zen does have a rich doctrinal background. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Polarities. Classical Chinese Chan is characterized by a set of polarities, absolute relative, Buddha nature, sunyata, sudden and gradual enlightenment, esoteric and exoteric transmission. <laughs> absolute relative The Prashnaparamita Sutras and Madhyamaka emphasize the non-duality of form and emptiness. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form. As the Heart Sutra says. This was understood to mean that ultimate reality is not a transcendental realm, but equal to the daily world of relative reality. This idea fitted into the Chinese culture, which emphasized the mundane world and society. But this does not tell how the absolute is present in the relative world. This question is answered in such schemata as the five ranks of Tozen, the ten bulls, the oxherding pictures and Hakuin's Four Ways of Knowing, the Madhyamaka Two Truths Doctrine and the Yogacara Three Natures and Trikaya Doctrines also give depictions of the interplay between the Absolute and the Relative. <laughs> Buddha nature and sunyata When Buddhism was introduced in China it was understood in native terms. Various sects struggled to attain an understanding of the Indian texts. The Tathagatagarbha Sutras and the idea of the Buddha nature were endorsed because of the perceived similarities with the Tao, which was understood as a transcendental reality underlying the world of appearances. Sunyata at first was understood as pointing to the Taoist Wu. The doctrine of the Buddha nature asserts that all sentient beings have Buddha nature skt. Buddhadhatu, Buddha element, Buddha principle, the element from which awakening springs. The Tathagatagarbha Sutras state that every living being has the potential to realize awakening. Hence Buddhism offers salvation to everyone, not only to monks or those who have freed themselves almost completely from karma in previous lives. The Yogacara theory of the eight consciousnesses explains how sensory input and the mind create the world we experience, and obscure the alaya vijnana, which is equated to the Buddha nature. When this potential is realized, and the defilements have been eliminated, the Buddha nature manifests as the Dharmakaya, the absolute reality which pervades everything in the world. 
In this way, it is also the primordial reality from which phenomenal reality springs. When this understanding is idealized, it becomes a transcendental reality beneath the world of appearances. Sunyata points to the emptiness or no thing ness of all things. Though we perceive a world of concrete and discrete objects, designated by names, on close analysis the thingness dissolves, leaving them empty of inherent existence. The Heart Sutra, a text from the Prajnaparamita Sutras, articulates this in the following saying in which the five skandhas are said to be empty. Yogacara explains this emptiness in an analysis of the way we perceive things. Everything we conceive of as the result of the working of the five skandhas results of perception, feeling, volition, and discrimination. The five skandhas together compose consciousness. The things we are conscious of are mere concepts, not noumenon. It took Chinese Buddhism several centuries to recognize that sunyata is not identical to wu, nor does Buddhism postulate a permanent soul. The influence of those various doctrinal and textual backgrounds is still discernible in Zen. Zen teachers still refer to Buddha nature, but the Zen tradition also emphasizes that Buddha nature is sunyata, the absence of an independent and substantial self. Topic. Sudden and gradual enlightenment In Zen Buddhism two main views on the way to enlightenment are discernible, namely sudden and gradual enlightenment. Early Chan recognized the transcendence of the body and mind, followed by non-defilement of knowledge and perception, or sudden insight into the true nature, jiangxing, followed by gradual purification of intentions. In the 8th century, Chan history was effectively refashioned by Shenhui, who created a dichotomy between the so-called East Mountain teaching or Northern School, led by Yukon Shengshu, and his own line of teaching, which he called the Southern School. Shenhui placed Huning into prominence as the sixth Chan patriarch, and emphasized sudden enlightenment, as opposed to the concurrent northern school's alleged gradual enlightenment. According to the sudden enlightenment propagated by Shenhui, insight into true nature is sudden, thereafter there can be no misunderstanding anymore about this true nature. In the Platform Sutra, the dichotomy between sudden and gradual is reconciled. Gaifeng Zongmi, fifth-generation successor to Shenhui, also softened the edge between sudden and gradual. In his analysis, sudden awakening points to seeing into one's true nature, but is to be followed by a gradual cultivation to attain Buddhahood. This gradual cultivation is also recognized by Dongshan Langji, Japanese Tozen, who described the five ranks of enlightenment. Topic: <laughs> Esoteric and Exoteric Transmission. According to Borup the emphasis on mind-to-mind -mind transmission is a form of esoteric transmission, in which the tradition and the enlightened mind is transmitted face to face. Metaphorically this can be described as the transmission from a flame from one candle to another candle, or the transmission from one vein to another. In exoteric transmission requires direct access to the teaching through a personal discovery of oneself. This type of transmission and identification is symbolized by the discovery of a shining lantern, or a mirror. <laughs> Chan scripture Chan is deeply rooted in the teachings and doctrines of Mahayana Buddhism. What the Chan tradition emphasizes is that enlightenment of the Buddha came not through intellectual reasoning, but rather through self-realization in Dharma practice and meditation. Therefore, it is held that it is primarily through dharma practice and meditation that others may attain enlightenment and become Buddhas as well. A review of the early historical documents and literature of early Chan masters clearly reveals that they were all well versed in numerous Mahayana Buddhist sutras. For example, in the Platform Sutra of the Sixth Patriarch, Huning cites and explains the Diamond Sutra, the Lotus Sutra, Sadharma Pundarika Sutra, the Vimalakirti Nirdesa Sutra, the Sarangama Sutra, and the Lankavatara Sutra. The Chan school had to develop a doctrinal tradition of its own to establish its position. Subsequently, the Chan tradition produced a rich corpus of written literature which has become a part of its practice and teaching. Among the earliest and most widely studied of the specifically Chan texts, dating to at least the 9th century CE, is the Platform Sutra of the Sixth Patriarch, attributed to Huning. The most important Chan texts belong to the Encounter Dialogue, 
genre, which developed into various collections of koans. Topic: Teaching and practice. See also Zen practice. Topic: Bodhisattva ideal. As a school of Mahayana Buddhism, Chan draws many of its basic driving concepts from that tradition, such as the bodhisattva ideal. Karuna is the counterpart of prajna. Avalokiteshvara embodies the striving for karuna, compassion, central to Chan practice as dhyana or meditation. In the Lin Ji school this is supplemented with koan study. <laughs> Chan meditation In meditation practice, the Chan tradition holds that the very notions of doctrine and teachings create various other notions and appearances that obscure the transcendent wisdom of each being's Buddha nature. The process of rediscovery goes under various terms such as introspection, a backward step, turning about, or turning the eye inward. Sitting meditation Sitting meditation is called zuokan, zuo chan zazen in Japanese, both simply meaning, sitting dhyana. During this sitting meditation, practitioners usually assume a position such as the lotus position, half lotus, Burmese, or Siza postures. To regulate the mind, awareness is directed towards counting or watching the breath, or put in the energy center below the navel. See also Anapanasati. Often, a square or round cushion placed on a padded mat is used to sit on, in some other cases, a chair may be used. At the beginning of the Song dynasty, practice with the koan method became popular, whereas others practiced silent illumination. This became the source of some differences in practice between the Linji and Kaodong traditions. Topic. Koan practice A koan literally public case is a story or dialogue generally related to chan or other buddhist history the most typical form is an anecdote involving early chinese chan masters these anecdotes involving famous chan teachers are a practical demonstration of their wisdom and can be used to test a student's progress in chan practice koans often appear to be paradoxical or linguistically meaningless dialogues or questions but to chan buddhists the koan is the place and the time and the event where truth reveals itself", unobstructed by the oppositions and differentiations of language. Answering a koan requires a student to let go of conceptual thinking and of the logical way we order the world, so that, like creativity in art, the appropriate insight and response arises naturally and spontaneously in the mind. Topic. Chan monasticism Chan developed a distinct monastic system. Topic. Emphasizing daily life As the Chan school grew in China, the monastic discipline also became distinct, focusing on practice through all aspects of life. Temples began emphasizing labor and humility, expanding the training of Chan to include the mundane tasks of daily life. D.T. Suzuki wrote that aspects of this life are, a life of humility, a life of labor, a life of service, a life of prayer and gratitude, and a life of meditation. The Chinese Chan master Beijing CE left behind a famous saying which had been the guiding principle of his life, a day without work is a day without food. Sinification of Buddhism in China It was scholar D.T. Suzuki's contention that a spiritual awakening was always the goal of Chan's training, but that part of what distinguished the tradition as it developed through the centuries in China was a way of life radically different from that of Indian Buddhists. In Indian Buddhism, the tradition of the mendicant prevailed, but Suzuki explained that in China social circumstances led to the development of a temple and training center system in which the abbot and the monks all performed mundane tasks. These included food gardening or farming, carpentry, architecture, housekeeping, administration or community direction, and the practice of traditional Chinese medicine. Consequently, the enlightenment sought in Chan had to stand up well to the demands and potential frustrations of everyday life. 
Topic. See also. Buddhism. Outline of Buddhism. Timeline of Buddhism. List of Buddhists. Chinese Buddhism. Japanese Zen. Yiduan. Topic. Notes. Topic. References. Topic. Sources. Topic. Published sources. Topic. Web sources. Topic. Further reading. Modern Classics D. T. Suzuki, Essays in Zen Buddhism, Three Vols Thomas Cleary, Zen Mind, Buddha Mind J. C. Cleary, Swampland Flowers, The Letters and Lectures of Zen Master Tahi Classic History Dumoulin, Heinrich 2005, Zen Buddhism, A History. Volume 1, India and China. World Wisdom Books. ISBN 978-0-941532-89-1 Dumoulin, Heinrich 2005, Zen Buddhism, A History. Volume 2, Japan. World Wisdom Books. ISBN 978-0-941532-90-7 Critical Zen Studies Jeffrey Broughton, Zongmi on Chan. Sung Bay Park, Buddhist Faith and Sudden Enlightenment. Topic. External links Oversight Zen Buddhism WWW Virtual Library The Zen Site Overview of Chan Centers Zen Centers at Curlie Zen Centers of the World Zen Center Specific Chan Centers Western Chan Fellowship Official Website Dharma Drum Retreat Center New York Official Website Established by Chan Master Sheng Yen, Texts Sacred-text.com's collection of Zen texts Budanet's collection of Zen texts Shambhala Sun Zen articles Booklets from Fo Guang Shan History Buddhism and Confucianism in Chan Sudden Approach, a cunning cultural paradigm History of Zen Buddhism Zen History Zen Quick Facts Critical Chan Research Stephen Heine, 2007, A Critical Survey of Works on Zen Since Yampolsky Homepage of Robert H. Scharf